Well, hello. Oh. Going out? Okay. Uh, my name is Milad, and welcome to an introduction to Redux. And Redux is a predictable state container for JavaScript. Um, and I just want to help reduce some of the confusion because uh, I'm pretty excited about Redux, and I want to, you know, I don't think you're going to get super excited about Redux, but I do want you to enjoy this nice blue because I'm wearing lots of blue today, so you're going to see a lot of this. And you're also going to hear a lot about state. You're going to hear me say probably the word state about 100 times today. Uh, to me, state is basically just a snapshot of the, a description of what's going on in your application, and uh, it's, it's basically a unique thing that gives you an idea of what's going on, and that's basically how you can think about Redux. So let's like go into it. So Redux, what is Redux? Like I said, it's an agnostic framework that's acting as a predictable state container for JavaScript applications. Makes sense, right? Uh, if not, you probably like me and probably said this several times, what the Redux. Uh, again, let's break it down. The state container is basically what it sounds like. It's a, a container of state, basically a JavaScript option, uh, object that's holding on to your state. And it's the one thing that's uh, about Redux is that it's, it's one source of truth for where all your data is pulled from. Um, let's see here. So the, the predictable part about it is because we have things called actions. Actions are a description of changes to your state. And that's the only way your state can change. And why, whoa, lots of stuff's going on. <laughs> uh, OK, so a couple of quick things uh, that we just missed. Uh, the reason why it's predictable is because those actions can be played back in order. And because it's a functional nature that everything is built upon, those same actions can always produce back the same state. So you, you know if you play those 20 things back, you're going to get the exact same 20 uh, the sa same state after those 20 things. And so why this makes it really good is because it's very simple in design. That all of Redux is done under 100 lines of code. And you can do reducer composition, which is basically something we learned about er a little bit earlier um, about functional composition, because reducers are basically just functions. That's all this is. And server rendering uh, is a really nice part about it because since you're just creating one giant object, you can basically uh, serialize that and store your entire state onto a server. And the next time a user loads up, if they need to, they can refresh their entire state just from one simple refresh. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? So let's talk about a little bit about the data flow that's going on in Redux. It's unidirectional. Everything in, that's done in Redux goes through the same life cycle. Uh, all data basically travels one point. Um, it starts with an action. An action describes the change. The change goes to something called a, a store. Uh, the store puts that change into a function that reduces it and basically creates the next state. And this just goes on and on and on. So everything is going through one central point. So there's basically three things in Redux. And this is, you know, I'm keeping my talk of like the very agnostic, basic part about Redux, because it is a very basic framework. And there's extra complexities when you start adding it with, Redu with React, with Angular. But there's basically three things. Uh, a state container, which is uh, basically holds your object, your JavaScript object, into the store. Actions which describe change that's happening into your state and reducers, which are functions that actually make the change and create a new state. So there's three principles of uh, Redux. One is that state is equal to an object. That state is immutable. It can't be written to. It can't be modified. Uh, that's why you're constantly creating new versions of the state. And the third is that uh, pure functions, which are called reducers, will always create new state for you. So let's talk a little bit about what these pure functions are. What uh, makes a pure function is that its value is dependent solely on its arguments. They have no side effects, no network calls, or anything like that. And the same argument will always equal the same output. And this is very important to Redux because one of the big things that Redux does that makes it efficient is that it checks to see whether the new state that it has is similar to the, its old state. In that case, when it does have a new state, it also triggers uh, a re-rendering. So 
So impure functions, the only difference is they basically have side effects. That they might uh, mutate the input that's coming in. They might make a network call. They basically make it so that the input you have coming in makes it very difficult to determine an output that's consistently the same. So that is one of the biggest things that we try to do in Redux is to create everything with a functional basis that we know the same input's gonna create the same output. And one of the ways that we do this is through the start, which is an action object. And an action object is basically just an object that's description of what the state changes. And it's the smallest amount of description that you can give to describe what this change is. And the only thing that you need is type uh, that you need to declare because every single function is basically checking this type to see do I know how to handle this specific state change and then you can add anything else you want it doesn't matter the only thing you need to have is a type and we'll see why so we talk about the reducer function now the reducer function takes in a state and it takes in that action object that we talked about state is your current state as you know it and what it's doing is returning back the next state, and it's always new. And what's good about this is that it helps you normalize the data that's going on in your application so you're not having a lot of duplicates of data. It's almost like having a little mini database in like some essences. So one of the good things about it is because the new state isn't just this thing that's consistently uh, piling up. Uh, you don't hold on to your old states. They get garbage collected at some point. So what's good about this is Parts of your state that were from the old state, they basically get reused again, which makes it really good for efficient data management. And uh, a little bit more blue for you guys. Just thought you guys could use a <laughs> nice little common Tuesday. So let's talk about, uh, this is what a basic reducer actually looks like. And there's a couple things to take note. First thing, uh, a reducer basically does three things. It returns either the state, uh, if it, could, if it came, comes in un, uh, undefined, then it initializes a state. And that you can see that we do that with state is equal to zero. The next thing it does is it checks the action for action.type to see, hey, do I know how to, if I have increment, do I know how to increment? If I have dec dec decrement, do I know how to decrement? And if it doesn't know how to do any of those things, then it basically just returns the state again. It, and that state might be an entire state object or might just be one small thing. That's what's really, in, that when going back to that composing uh, reducers, you can compose things so that one part of your state just handles just this little piece of information, which makes it really easy to test out different parts of your application. Um, let's see what else we got here. So, uh, the store is so important that I made this stupid thing. And it's basically saying the store is the heart. And it holds the state object, dispatches action, and this last one's the stretch. It applies the reducers to refresh state. So <laughs> I almost made that work. <laughs> and uh, this one always gives me a little bit of problems getting past. So we'll see here. There we go. Yeah. So there's three important methods that the store has. And this is basically how you interact with uh, Redux. I, I promise, there's, there's three very important methods. Oh, here they are. And there they go. <laughs> we'll talk about them in, in this part, the mechanics of the store. So those three, um, those three uh, methods, they're basically uh, subscribe method which subscribes listeners to an array which is held inside the store. The store also holds a variable of state and get state returns that variable. Dispatch is a method that allows action objects to come back in and the reducers and the functions that it has basically gets called with that action and such. And that's basically all the store is. It's very simple. So there's a couple more points about thinking functionally. Um, and pushing to an array creates a mutation. Remember, we don't want mutations. So the best way to handle this when dealing with new parts of state is don't push to an array. Use a spread operator with slice, and you can see uh, one of the things that we're doing is adding the array and then just putting in the new element that we want in. Um, and this is new with ES6 that you're able to take advantage of. And instead of splicing, 
And you can see that we're basically bringing in a slice, which brings back a new copy of your array. And we're going up to the index, leaving out the element that we didn't want that we would have done with splice, and then adding the rest in. And this isn't just with arrays. This is also similar with objects. So we've got to keep pure. We want to avoid uh, mutations. So you can't just change a property on an object. Um, that would be a mutation. So what you want to do instead is something similar. We do uh, use two different methods, either object.assign, which takes as its first uh, argument a, uh, a target, and then the following are sources. If you start with an empty object, then basically you start copying the keys over from all the uh, following uh, objects that you put in. And so this will allow you to create uh, the previous object that you had, replacing only the ones that you were interested in. Like, for example, we wanted to change this to uh, not group added complete, so we simply just change that one key. There's also uh, ES7 object spread uh, that we can use too. Uh, it's not, uh, you have to use Babel in a certain way to make sure you have access to that function from what I'm aware of. And that's just about it, but let's just like talk about the life cycle one last time. So basically an action gets dispatched to the state. That's either coming from a network call or uh, user interaction. This is basically just a description saying, hey, I turned this off, I added this, I subtracted this, and that will give, uh, send that out to the store. The store receives this from its dispatch, and it's taking that action and sending it to the correct uh, function that will then uh, calculate based upon the old state, this action object, to see what it needs to do, and then it returns back this new version of state. Once it gets this new state, anything that's subscribed to its listeners array then gets invoked, and all in those invocations, they have access to uh, get state, which will give them the new value of state, and then they can do whatever they want to do with it. And that basically allows you to do uh, all the rendering and view bindings which make this a uh, very powerful system. So that's basically it, and I hope you're not asking yourself still what the Redux. Thank you. <laughs>